Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the video. This is Fisherman Log number 173. And the transformation of these zebra daniels from before, when they're in the heavily planted aquarium uh, with the guppies as their tank mates, to now, and with all this open space, it's night and day. They are way more active. They've fattened up really, really well. I haven't done much more than just a bit of a water change, pulled the plants out, of course. I haven't cleaned the filter or anything else. So the only change is... They now have all this space, and as you can see, they're very, very frisky. So what it is, I put a tray of some wasser tang in here. I'm going to leave that in there for a little bit and let them do their thing. I mean, they're not hard to breed, though. As long as the water conditions are semi-reasonable, they will lay eggs. So I'm going to leave them in here for a bit, and then I'm going to pull that tray out and put it in, hopefully, another aquarium I can set up or a bin if I can't. And I am going to start raising some more zebra daniels because while well, this is the last of the uh, original spawn that I did, uh, the rest have gone out to clients, and all I have is the original adults too, but while well, they're getting older and they've also been a bit beaten up by that gardener and killifish, so I want to breed some more of these guys. And I took this shot because, well, when I do my uh, voiceover, I uh, have it on a big screen so I can see a lot more what's going on than when I'm just looking in the aquarium and I thought I would possibly see either eggs or maybe a little uh, zebra daniel fry when they first hatch out they're like little lines and they have a little sticky pad on the top of their head and they uh, usually stick to the side of aquariums or hopefully that box but I didn't see anything in there I'm gonna have another look later on if you guys have spotted something that I'm missing while I am talking uh, definitely leave a comment below please now, I recorded this because I wanted to check over the red crystal shrimp because uh, in the last video I did, they had uh, well, two or three females that were carrying eggs, and I wanted to have a quick look in here to see if I could spot them, see if they had, uh, well, if the eggs had hatched, and, well, it's a possibility. At this point, I wasn't sure because I couldn't see any of the females that were carrying, uh, but uh, later on in the day, I did spot two females. They might be new females that are carrying. All I know is they're doing really well in here now. I'm very happy with the progress of this. I uh, hope to get a lot more of them. Uh, they're a lovely little shrimp. And anyway, uh, like I said, I'm very happy with the, what's going on here. Now, the other thing that was new recently, uh, relatively speaking, is I cleaned this entirely out. And I put in a fairly large group of white clouds and... I wish I could record them, but they're very camera shy in here. I'm not sure why, but every time I come over here when I'm not feeding or just, you know, I have something in my hands, they just go in, into that back corner and it's really hard to get a good shot of them. But they're happy. They're fattened up quite a bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with these guys I'm doing with the Zebra Daniels. I'm going to stick in uh, a small tray at some point and let them spawn. Again, a very easy fish to spawn. Just give them a spot and they'll take care of the rest. And I'm going to start raising these guys as well. Uh, white clouds are a nice fish. I like them. I find the zebra dandies a bit more flashy. And they're better for like daycares and that sort of stuff. But uh, they're both wonderful fish. And uh, well, I could definitely use more of either one of them. So I'm going to get around to raising as many as I can uh, within reason, of course. So I wanted to record this tank. This is a tank that's doing really well with all those... Uh, well, basically golden colored guppies but I noticed a couple of males popping out that weren't I haven't added anything to this tank these are just fry that have grown up and if you remember way back when I had a really interesting culture of, of culture a colony of uh, guppies in here and it seems to be some of those genes are still being carried around and uh, yeah I just wanted to record this uh, some of those males are really quite nice and I might again once I get some more tank space going uh, set them up to breed uh, like specifically these guys are always doing well uh, I have yet to set up another colony of them I have obviously taken some out of here I put them in clients tanks they're all doing fine uh, at some point I do want to have two of these going I don't like having them all in one tank stuff can happen and I definitely don't want to lose uh, that line it's doing really well this used to be my goldfish tank this is where those two big goldfish were and obviously I cleaned it all out, got it all set back up, and I put the... These are the guppies that used to be in with the zebra daniels, and, well, <laughs> they're doing very well in here. And it's just interesting how this aquarium has uh, done so well since, well, the goldfish have been removed. 
I mean, with goldfish, it can't have any plants or anything, so it, it was just nice to have it looking this way instead of just an empty tank. So when I uh, had the zebra daniels up top, there's a few that I really didn't like the look of. Uh, I didn't want them to breed, so I threw them down here. Uh, this is my cull tank. Uh, just put in all the stuff that I find uh, undesirable. But ever since then, uh, since they've had all that open space and whatever else was going on in that upper tank, uh, they have actually bounced back really nicely. They're actually quite acceptable fish now, except uh, one or two of them. So anyway, that's interesting. I've always thought that, you know, too many plants at any given time is a bit of a problem. Uh, definitely with zebra daniels. So these are the filters I, I'm still getting around to putting that video series together, by the way. Just been very busy at work. And uh, I am going to get uh, to making more of that shortly. So that is a solid tub of duckweed. There's nothing else in there. I just scooped it out of a couple of tanks. I will never ever get rid of this stuff. <laughs> but anyway, it's just I thought I'd record it because it's kind of interesting. There's still way more in some of the tanks I have. Now, if you remember, I had talked to you about one of the filters I'd built a long time ago that had a, uh, one of the egg crate bottoms to it, and I figured there was issues with it because some of the OB zebras I had were dying off in that tank, and it didn't look good. I started having a similar problem in here, and it turns out that the reason for it all is uh, the tank uh, got a little cool, only by well, like a degree or two because it's uh, now winter here, and uh, that was the same problem I was having down here. It is not necessarily the filter. Uh, there are actually uh, three or four zebra daniels, uh, sorry, zebra daniels, uh, OB zebras in here. Uh, they all went and hit, of course, because I'm recording them. But yeah, it's uh, definitely a heat issue with these particular, uh, well, and boon is they're used to you know, much warmer water when the winter comes along. And they, well, they stop breeding in uh, the main tank that I have where they spawn. I always thought that was a good idea because I, I knew it was a little bit cooler, but I didn't think it was cool enough that it caused them any health issues. So having stuck that heater and warmed it up two degrees uh, does make a world of difference for them. So, you know, it's one of these things that you learn. So anyway, that's basically the end of today's video. I wanted to show you a little bit more of uh, a aquarium that I have a lot of cherry shrimp in. This is my culture tank for them. You'll see it here in a second. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds in here. And I use these obviously for uh, feeding some of the bigger fish. And yeah, I just I wanted to show it to you because I don't really show this tank very often. This is also my, as you can see, my bristlenose breeding tank. So anyway, there you go. Thank you for tuning in this week. Leave comments. Let me know what you think about all this. And I will see you in the next video. And bye for now.